Now, I'm gonna do my best job to persuade you into not purchasing the Studio Display today because I have five reasons why if you are an iPad owner with an M1, M2, and you wanna connect it to external display, why you should avoid the Studio Display at all costs. Let's get started. Starting with number five, Starting with number five display, has a robust display has feature a robust. set, including it's got a stunning 5K panel. It's pixel perfect at 218 pixels per inch. It hits 600 nits of backlight, making it plenty bright for almost anyone in almost any situation. Except for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro owners who are watching this video, that is because when you pair this with a 12.9 inch iPad, which has the mini LED display, which is super bright, I mean, it might not look bad, but it is gonna be significantly dimmer than the display that you have on your 12.9 inch iPad Pro, because it's not gonna be able to hit the 1000 nits of brightness for mixed usage, nor can it hit the 1600 nits of brightness for HDR content, because the display itself doesn't support HDR. It has a maximum brightness of 600 nits. But maybe you don't own a 12.9 inch iPad Pro, or you maybe don't care about display brightness. Well, hang on, number four is gonna be a doozy for you. As I mentioned, the studio display has a robust set of features including Thunderbolt 3, and the Studio Display can connect to anything out there as long as it supports Thunderbolt and it has an Apple logo. Now, you will be supremely disappointed if you plan to use the $1,599 Studio Display with a PlayStation, with an Xbox, with a Nintendo Switch, or even an Apple TV because it will simply not work. Nope, zero, zilch, not gonna happen. And if it does happen, you're gonna have to jump through a ton of hoops in order to get it to work, and chances are the quality of experience that you have with using this display that you just paid $1,600 for is gonna be degraded where it's not even worth the effort. That is my opinion. I've tried to use this display with, again, Xbox, PlayStation, even when you connect to a, a Windows machine, you don't get the integration. Now, it's surprising and it's not because Apple goes through a lot of effort to integrate their products together and make them work seamlessly, and it seems like they kind of dropped the ball here on this display when you think about using it with other products. It's like almost Apple went out of their way to screw owners of the studio display to making sure that they can't use it with anything else. I think that's a big faux pas on Apple's part. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Now suppose number five and number four don't prevent you from purchasing the studio display and you are still thinking about dropping $1,599 on it. Well, hopefully you are not someone who prioritizes viewability or maybe, heaven forbid, you're over six foot one because if you are, the $1599 price tag is gonna go up by $300 because you will need to buy the tilt and height adjustable stand. Now, there are many times when five inches is more than enough, at least that's what I hear, but when the vertical clearance from the top of your desk to the bottom of the studio display is only about five inches and when you factor in the limited viewing angles that you have from the tilt, it's just not really kind of worth it for that basic stand. So that's one thing that you definitely need to consider if you are thinking about the studio display. And the reason why I would not suggest it to someone who again prioritizes viewability or who someone who prioritizes uh, being tall, more over six foot one. Regarding product integration, I cannot think of another company that does a better job integrating two products together than Apple to make sure that they work harmoniously together. AirPods and your iPhone, your Magic Keyboard and your iPad Pro, or even the Apple Pencil and the iPad, which is, makes me so surprised that Apple dropped the ball when it comes to integrating features on the iPad and the Studio Display. Now, I love my Studio Display, so do not get me wrong. It's not that the two don't work well together, but there is adjacent functionality, kind of outside of the core functionality, that is just not there today. So you can't use the Studio Display's built-in camera for FaceTime, even though it's kind of a potato cam, it's not really that great. It's like, hello, it's right here, why can't I use it? Nor can you update the Studio Display's software version without first connecting it to a Mac. Maybe you don't even own a Mac. Maybe you're trying to live this, you know, this desktop or PC-free lifestyle where you don't want a computer and you want to use your iPad as your primary computing platform. Well, hey, guess what? You can't update your Studio Display software. Now, that's not to say that the integration between the two products won't get better over time because this is software-related and not hardware-related, but it's not there today. And if you're considering buying the Studio Display now, this is something that you need to know. Now that leads me to number one, and I've really been teasing this throughout the video. Objectively speaking, you do not get what you pay for when you spend $1,599 on the studio display and you wanna use it with your iPad Air or iPad Pro. Sure, it's well designed, it's made from premium materials, but you are limited from using it with more than one device simultaneously, or if you wanna use it with another device, you're gonna to have to constantly disconnect it and reconnect it, which is a pain if you ask me, because I do that sometimes with my monitor. Nor it can be used with anything other than a Mac. It does not seamlessly work with your mini LED iPad Pro. It doesn't support HDR, it has limited viewing angles, and there are similarly priced options like the LG Ultrafine 5K, which costs about $300 less than the studio display. I mean, you're gonna get about 90% of the functionality, minus the 600 nit backlight. You're gonna get mediocre speakers, and it's made of plastic. 
but all those things, are they worth the $300 increase in cost? Now for me, they totally are. I love my studio display and I would not uh, buy the Ultrafine 5K as a replacement or instead of the studio display. But for you, maybe they're not. Guys, thank you very much for watching my video on why you should avoid the studio display at all costs. Let me know if you are considering buying an external display for your iPad and if you are, which one is it? Do you think the studio display is really worth $1,599? Make sure you smash that like button and subscribe if you are not already and I will talk to you in the next one.